Well, my dear viewers, it's time for the final entry in Future Diary Lovely Madness. It's about to get real wild, so buckle in and let's get started. Now, I don't know if you guys realize this, but uh, the woman I call Crazy Eyes is a nutcase. Go figure. We start our final act with a flashback to Libidio Demon a year or so back. Long story short, a poor, poor woman is going to get a love letter from Super Stud, and Crazy Eyes knows about it. Instead of the usual response, including a big knife and carnage, Crazy Eyes decides to dress as a big F-off bunny, making sure her man can't make a big mistake. Now, it's important to note that at this point, Super Stud isn't quite aware of, uh, Mick crazy eyes. Uh, so this scene is a lot funnier once you look at it from that lens. Ah! Did I sit on your freaking eggs or something? Why am I being harassed by a furry? <laughs> crazy eyes fails, but conveniently for her, after Super Stud proposes marriage, the poor woman dies of something astute viewers like us know all too well. Ahem. <laughs> Extreme arousal. I don't know why I sound like I'm a southern mass preacher, but shit. Oh, fuck. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me curse. Oh. Anyway, back to the present. Super Stud tells God to shove it for letting his mom die, which prompts him to learn that should he win this battle royale, he'll become a god and might be able to bring his mom back. The piece of garbage estranged father dares to show his face to Super Stud. And let me tell you, our main character's restraint in not calling upon Crazy Eyes to paint the walls a shade of red is admirable. Now, I do consider myself to be one of these alpha males. But sometimes I can be showed up. You see, Super Stud, out of the goodness of his heart, decides once again to forgive the waste of space that is his father. Sure, he's the worst excuse for a man ever to be created, but that is still the main character's father. A group of Japanese traffic cops show up and uh, stab Super Stud's father. Now, this brings up a mixed bag of emotions. On one hand, the guy absolutely deserved to die. On the other, of course, his son still loves him. So it prompts Alpha Male to unleash his set of skills otherwise known as being called a badass, and John wicking those suckers into hell. It's pretty goddamn awesome. Main character is done with the kid gloves. They're coming off, and everybody should be very afraid. Not used to unleashing his secret fighting style. Crazy Eyes shows up to help him. She might be crazy, but... Damn it, she is great. Smooches! Because that's how much I love you. Come on, Lavideo Demon. Gonna make me cry. This episode begins with a pretty obvious shift in tone from our dream team. Like I said earlier, main character isn't playing nice anymore. Game's on, and he intends to win. Showing up to the meeting of lunatics beside Crazy Eyes, the final players of this battle royale are as follows. Goofy ass body positivity activist, pirate babe. I think that's the priest from Helsing Ultimate. Whatever. You will witness what happens here today, and you will tell of it later. Our main character, Super Stud, and of course, Crazy Eyes is here too. Let's get going. <laughs> hold on, hold on. Holy shit! The next scene is pirate babe sipping coffee with a squirrel poking out of her coat. My heart is ablaze right now. That's awesome. Y'all fan of the uh, American Revolution? Guerrilla warfare and all that jazz? I know I am. Well, main character takes a page out of that book and instigates a showdown using body positivity activists and her loyal SJW followers and pits them against the priest. This clearly goes to plan, likely because Alpha Male is so freaking awesome. However, as any SJW group... They fail to understand how stupid they are. This was a clever plan to take out the body positivity lady. A lobidio demon clad in the colors of the Grim Reaper 
hack some heads off while Super Stud starts blasting. This starts a chase scene between the Dream Team and, well, for some reason, both the priest and the body positivity activist. I, uh, I thought they weren't friends due to the whole difference in ideologies thing and put your hands on me or you might get hurt we are all stupider for having watched it regardless after a car crash the dream team corner the radical duo this next scene is weird sherlock shows up to steal super stud away because of course he does but also pirate babe shows up as well but i'm not sure why my source is that I made it the fuck up. They have come to reveal that this libido demon is actually an imposter. That girl is an imposter. No, I'm not an imposter. I swear it, Yuki. I'm <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I have no words for this. Super Stud doesn't seem to care much about what Sherlock is going off about. Who cares if she's an imposter? She's still a cutie. Anyway, Pirate Babe shows off the goods for a solid two minutes. While I do appreciate this, I can't use it, damn it. After that, Pirate Babe is going to deal a finishing blow to the radical duo. But in another moment where I can't help but be a little confused, Pirate Babe hucks a live grenade at the body positivity lady and the priest, which should be game over. However, since standard issue grenades don't take five seconds to explode in this universe, or if they do, this priest is a wizard, because he yoinks that shit from the air, gloats for five seconds, and then tosses it back. Okay, then. Well, Pirate Babe is fine, so I guess it's whatever. A few moments later, she's saved from capture by off-brand Jesus Hair, who then proceeds to whip out a diamond ring and propose. Either I'm drunk... Or this episode is drunk. The former being the better bet. Levi. Levi. The the Titans, I think they're... Co oh, 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 shit. Oh. But regardless, we all know she only loves one man. Now, I might think that off-brand Jesus Hair Policeman is kind of a joke. But when Pirate Babe is about to blow herself up because she's been... Uh, accosted by some very thirsty men, he valiantly saves her and yeets that C4 away. He certainly has a man's commitment, that's for sure. I'll spare you the long explanation of why half the episode happens, but due to the priest and Mrs. Body Positivity joining forces, for whatever reason, everybody in the city can now tell the future using their phones. I'll instead point you to something far more amusing. And I call this my lovely Hinata diary. We haven't talked about this? No. No, don't read it! Hinata's boobs are like humongous. Hooray, Hooray for, for boobies! Because literally everybody can tell the future now, which is annoying and pointless, Pirate Babe wants to shut down this bullshit. So she goes to the nearby woods and sets her squirrels free. She wants to spare them from the bloodshed. This will be great. I love a good showdown. Hold the phone. What? The bleep. Beta 1, you insufferable dweeb, go away! Well, maybe he can be used as a body shield during the showdown, which, as is required, will happen on another skyscraper. Fights on. The hooligans are playing support while Pirate Babe and Off-Brand are ascending the stairs. While running through the hallways, narrowly avoiding the near-omniscient guards that are protecting the priest, Pirate Babe has the unlucky, or, I mean, lucky depending on how you look at it, Moment of triggering a claymore, blowing her arm off. In her weakened state, she can't fight back, but because a true man of honor is there, in the form of off-brand Jesus hair, he shields her using his body, and countless bullets are soaked up into his back. Yeah, I think it's about that time. Today we honor someone who will forever hold a place in our hearts. His name was off-brand Jesus Hair Policeman, and he died a hero. So, using the power vested in me, I am now promoting him to Alpha Male. Now, I get what you're about to say. Where's the Dream Team? Well, I'll tell you. After the heroic sacrifice from the second in-line Alpha Male, this universe's king of the Alpha Male ways shows up. Super Stud saves Pirate Babe, and we get a jump cut to this moment. 
<laughs> Mark me down as scared and horny. That's right, kids. Papa and Mama are here. The Dream Team are really aggravating the priest. You see, he runs a tight Christian ship here, and these blasphemous activities are so not cool, bro. You're telling me that girl is running amok downstairs with a katana. The hooligan squad is at gunpoint, and Beta-1 is making everything worse, which is pretty normal for him. I would have let him go if he hadn't said hold on. Guess we gotta kill him then. <laughs> Good thing Crazy Eyes has got that sweet-ass katana. She's got it covered. The priest is hiding behind a vault door. He's terrified that Super Stud's gonna come in and smack him. So, Super Stud has to expertly hack the vault door to get to the priest. But wouldn't you know, nobody expects a second vault door. Why settle for a single door when you can have two? This second door can only be opened by the power of love. Pirate Babe is with Super Stud, but to be honest, she might be the hottest woman roaming the seas, but to Super Stud, she ain't got shit on libido demon. This sends Pirate Babe into a temporary manic state, where she tries to kill everything in sight, including our main character. Understandable, but very futile. Nobody can kill this man. I've kinda got a soft spot for you, Yuki. Aww, that's so sweet. You ain't ever gonna get him back, kid. Your parents are dead. Okay, now that's a mixed signal. Let's not tempt fate here, Missy. Super Stud is a lover, but he's also packing an MP5. Somewhere else, Crazy Eyes is about to split body positivity activist in half. Nobody could possibly match her pent up sexual aggression is what she thinks, but Sherlock is there to prove her wrong. I wish we could see the epic showdown, but Super Stud wants a picture of her thighs, so that'll have to wait. Alpha male is done with Pirate Babe's garbage, so he lights her up. I'm sorry, dear. Apparently, a bullet through the stomach does wonders to fix her attitude, because she's ready to blow herself up to open the other vault door. Godspeed, Pirate Babe. I'll shed a tear for your sacrifice. It doesn't work, like at all. The second vault door is still standing. <laughs> His victory is short-lived because when Crazy Eyes shows up, the power of love opens the door. She walks right in and lands a sick headshot. How's that for a prayer answered, soy boy? All's well that ends well, but not really because reality starts tearing itself apart and that doesn't really bode well. So reality is sort of going out the window at the moment. Alpha Male still has to kill the activist before becoming God. So time is of the essence. Sherlock interrupts the Dream Team's mad dash, and Crazy Eyes is done competing for her man. She shanks his ass. Oh no. Too bad, Sugar Plum. Our resident Sherlock Holmes is all over that shit. He's wearing body armor, and he ain't out of the running yet. Alpha Male lets the two sex demons sort it out amongst themselves. He's got far more pressing matters, like an SJW to deal with. However, Sherlock isn't the only one in his way. Dream Girl and the Pervert are there too. And they really want to ruin his day. During this time, Crazy Eyes is doing her thing. Her thing being stabbing herself and calling Super Stud to tell him everybody wants him dead. He doesn't believe her, because he's aware of her being completely nuts. <laughs> but he's fresh out of shits to give, so he starts blasting. Dream Girl is the first one down. Sorry, but you're a hindrance right now. Pervert Girl is next. Oh my god, get out, get out of the way! What are you doing? She's dead. Beta 1 is the last to go. Alpha offers to let him live and be his mate or something. But Beta 1 is as stupid as ever breaking his scrawny hand on Super Stud's chiseled face and taking a few rounds to the gut. I'd be lying if I said this saddened me in some way. All right, now that everybody is out of the way, let's finish up this rodeo. No, Sh Sh Sherlock, don't do it. It's not worth it. You can't seduce Alpha Male if you're dead. Get out of the way, please, man. He actually does leave main character alone, but when Libidio Demon shows up, the only way this ends is with a fight to the death. It's clear Sherlock would have won, but he made a terrible, terrible mistake. He, uh, he kissed Super Stud in front of Crazy Eyes, which, my god. <laughs> 
Things are messy, but the dream team take out the activist. All's well that, oh my god, Sherlock! He is an absolute alpha! He's got a gaping wound in his neck and about five seconds to live, and even after being decapitated, tells Super Stud he loves him via a message on his phone. Hell yes, man. That shit was alpha. It was totally alpha. The battle royale is almost over. It's just the dream team now. Since Crazy Eyes and Super Stud are the only ones left, the video demon just has to kick the bucket, and Alpha Male will become Alpha God. But before that, the duo get to spend some romantic time together. Playing house ought to be fun. <laughs> Look, I know it freaks you out that I'm crazy good at killing people and that I might not be as pretty as some of the other girls. Super Stud finally decides it's about time to make some noise in a scene so passionate yet violent. The two go to absolute town on each other, and my god, I can't possibly show any of it, but let me tell you, Alpha Male can move those hips with the best of us. Whoa, I should, I should probably write that down. Afterwards, the reaction from Crazy Eyes isn't really the one I expected. She immediately tries to slaughter him with an axe. Now, in uh, my expert ways, I'm going to try to really quickly run down why this is happening. <gasps> It turns out that technically Crazy Eyes is an imposter. She is from another universe where she was unable to convince another version of Super Stud to kill her. So upon winning the throne of God, chose to try it again in a vain attempt to save him. I'm not sure why, but since main character won't kill her even now, she figures she'll try it again by killing him. Sound logic. I, I, don't, I don't see any problem with that plan whatsoever. I... <laughs> This is quite the set of circumstances. The world is still imploding, and now Libidio Demon is trying to kill Super Stud. Gotta take one for the team. Stud is dropped off a cliff, and he's shit out of luck. Rule number one is pointless now, seeing that the only person who would have helped him was, uh, well, she's trying to kill him. Psych! Pirate Babe is back, son! She can fly now. Rule number one is never out of commission. She yoinks Super Stud from midair. Super Stud was way too quick to judge her as inferior. The race is on to stop Libidio Demon. Nobody wants to see another stud tormented by the likes of her. The new dream team of Pirate Babe and Super Stud race over to save the third version of Yuno. For, well, from herself. But it appears... Crazy Eyes might have something nefarious in mind for our main character. Pirate Babe has to tell the boyfriend from this dimension that they're through, due to her plan to get hitched to Super Stud, which is going to happen real soon as far as she's concerned. Super Stud is facing off with Yuno, who received her god powers a little early, but whatever. He's determined to knock some sense into this bimbo. Damn it, Yuki, why do you always have to interfere? Because I love you, you crazy bitch! She tries in vain to kill him, but regardless of her mystical powers, the man can't be killed. So instead, she opts for a far more streamlined option, trapping him in yet another dimension. While that's going on, Pirate Babe is beating the shit out of an angry little elf. I, uh, I'm not too sure why this is happening, but it's fun to watch. The episode ends with a very confused super stud who has just been shoved into a pocket dimension. Ah, eh, well, he'll deal with it anyway. We arrive at the final episode. This long, arduous journey has been fun. Super Stud is trapped in a pocket dimension where the battle royale never happened. He gets to have everything he ever wanted, and Crazy Eyes is nowhere to be seen. But that shit's boring, so he breaks the hell out using facts and logic. I feel the light, do you? Do you feel it? <clears throat> I mean, uh, his manly F in essence. Hey. Shut up, I'm MJF reporting live from the worst country ever, Canada. Overcome with her love, Crazy Eyes stabs herself to let Super Stud be the final victor. They part with a final smooch. I'm really selling it short. This scene does not get easier to watch. Well, after Yuno dies, Super Stud returns to the previous dimension and becomes God. In the final moments of this show, we see our main character sulking. 
Cheer up, sport. You can always give the pirate babe a booty call. Whoa, okay, alrighty then. Thank you so much for watching Future Diary Lovely Madness. If you haven't watched Future Diary, you absolutely need to. It's one of the best animes to ever be released. With that being said, I'm your American Otaku, and I'll see you next time.